You sung, we have some great questions about the computable document format or CDF here for you. So let's first start off with what are the advantages of CDF for dynamic interfaces? That's uh, actually two separate questions. So what is the advantage of CDF for mathematical users who are already using Mathematica? And the other one could be uh, what is the you know, advantage of CDF overall in general, right? You know, the people who may not use Mathematica for you know, it's a uh, you know people. Some people complain it's another format, right? We have a PDF, Flash, and everything. But why why bother with the CDF? So I will try to address both of them. First, let's start with the uh, you know the in in general question: Why CDF? So a little bit too marketish, but <laughs> I, will, I will try not to be sound like that. But we have a uh, we actually created when we developed the CDF format, we uh, did uh, some sort of a comparison with the other formats. So here you go. So this uh, this is a page under our wordframe.com slash CDF, you know, and you can easily navigate and find this particular chart. So overall, I mean, for me, and particularly for mathematical user or even non just a, you know general technology pers person who actually had a experience of making the web you know page using these dynamics, for me the real you know the ben benefit of the CDF is first, it's a more integrated format, you know. The uh, graphics and the formula and these everything, you know, can be in single format and you can share it with everybody else. And then another real strong part, I mean, that's why, why actually I love CDF than anything else is the computation. Because behind the CDF, we, you are essentially getting the Mathematica. So you download the CDF player and the computation power is almost equal to the, uh, you know, with a small limitation because it's free and, and there's a security issue on the website. But except that, it's almost what you're getting with the Mathematica. So for instance, I, I showed in previous example this type of financial chart and computing time value in these things. Think about implementing it for your company, for your school in using, let's say, JavaScript. The problem is, Yes, JavaScript as itself is a language, but it doesn't contain these different libraries. You have to find those libraries, you know, find those, you know, for instance, that ND soft. You know, it's hard to find, actually, and uh, also maintaining speed. So that's real strong part of the CDF. It comes with all these different computational pieces in single framework, and you can easily put them together. Now, for mathematical users, obvious benefit is you can share this with uh, the people you, who might not have a Mathematica. Of course, it would be great if they also have a Mathematica, but you know, sometimes it happens, right? So I will quickly show you. And then I am actually seeing another question about how easy to turn this normal notebook into CDF format and such a question. So I think this is a good opportunity to introduce. But uh, I mean, it's, we are already have a separate you know, the, uh, virtual conference about this CDF, so I will introduce that later on once I explain this. So let me start with a very simple plot like a sine x. Now, I want to you know, make it just like I, uh, you know, before. I want to make it manipulate, you know, so I will change the frequency, all right, 8, 1, 2, 10. Very simple way to make it, and you know, it's not bad either. And you know, let's make it much more interesting. I mean, not much more, but slightly more interesting. So I will add a uh, you know, shifting part to here. So as you can see, you can move it around, you can change the frequency, and so on and so forth. Now, I want to you know, share this with, for instance, I'm a teacher. I want to share this with my student, with, which, who might not have a Mathematica. That's where CDF come in play. So it's a great way to turn these notebooks, the, the one that you're using, into the uh, you know, shareable you know, the web resource. So, the way of doing creating CDF file is very simple. I think that was also one other incoming question. Boy, today we are getting a lot of questions here, so yeah. you know, it's very hard to catch up. But as you can see, file under the file menu, you can see there's a new menu in version 8 called deploy. Now, you can choose to make it as a standalone. What it does is it saves as uh, your notebook as a .cdf file. Then you can just send it to the uh, people who might have, you know, using email or whatever. And then, only thing they have to do is go to our site, like, you know, from .com slash cdf and get download the CDF player. Then you can open this just as if it's a, you know, mathematical notebook. But of course, this free, free CDF does not allow you to modify the contents. It's just purely view only. Now, well, I want to just embed into the um, our, my website be because I, I guess a lot of people already seen our demonstration page or blog page where we have this nice embedded CD, for example. Someone like, you know, you can think of it as someone like a flash, like an embedded one, but a much more powerful flash, I would say. Now, to do so, there's another option called the embed in HTML. I will just try to follow that line. So it has a nice visual setup and it describes what it is. Continue on and I will 
I have to choose where to save it. So let's say it's under one of my directory. I will name it sign.cdf. Continue on. It asks, OK, it's an embedding. So I need to have a HTML file, which will embed this one. And it will be in the same directory. Then it create a uh, embedding code for you. So I will quickly cut and paste it. OK. Cut. Now I'm opening up my you know, the text editor. I will make a very basic HTML structure, close it, and well, to make it sure it is really embedding, I will put some title, right? Sign plot, and embedding the code, then I put the uh, some description. This is a sign plot, and you can change A and B, just just for fun. Now, how let's see how it works. So I just create that file. Uh, let me bring up the uh, web browser. Where are you? Yeah, we just had a question come in. Are CDF documents easy to display on web browsers? Yep. So that's what exactly I'm trying to do. Okay, I just create this HTML file, and voila, that's what you see. So you know, of course, if you don't have a plugin, of course I do have a plugin, but the uh, either ask you to download the plugin, either say that you know the mathematical plugin is available in such and such, then you click the user click it, then you'll be able to download it. Now this is a uh, one way, and the uh, oh there's an additional question about import and export a you know the images into the CDF. Okay, it's a very tricky question because a standalone. CDF, just I, I, I described, you know, the one that you can share using, you know, that, that allows a, uh, a, you know, accessing of resources, but only through the web, because, you know, that's a security issue, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, Wolfram Institute doesn't want arbitrary program to access your files, for instance, you know, who knows what kind of, you know, some, you know, ill thing that it can do. So that's a security issue, and we, we have our sandbox, so, you know, the CDF, the shared CDF cannot go to your local machine and access this data. Although you can still access the resources that are available through the web, like HTTP slash. So I will give you one quick example, which I, I already used in the our one of the special event. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to find it for me. Okay, here's one example. So this is one typical example of using external web resources. I'm getting this data from the uh, NASA's Hubble Gallery. The images are humongous, so I cannot include that in my CDF file because it, the CD file itself can be uh, you know, a couple of megabytes. I don't want that. So you know, it load up each images whenever you know, people open up. Now, once, when that happens, like importing these things, some, some security issue happens, the uh, CDF plugin will ask you whether you want to really do that. So this is what warning you're getting, and I enabled it. Then as you can see, it's right now you know, in real time getting the data from the uh, NASA. And these are just thumbnails, but actual images are very big. It's like everything is like, four or five megabytes images, but you know, we have a fast connection here. So this is one way. And it's very deep issue, you know, there's a lot of interesting you can do with the CDF. I would suggest you to go to the our training site. You know, there's a tab called the special events and you will find that there's a CDF virtual workshop the history. We go there. We have a lot of good courses. You know, the uh, general overview, the uh, John McClellan's course is pretty nice and how to embed things in the web. The Vitalis course is excellent about that. And in my course, I describe more these top level, you know, the higher level things, like how to include these external resources into such. And another question that uh, one of our viewers has asked, uh, would CDF be a viable format for publishing a math textbook? And on mm -hmm. our CDF examples page, we have yep. an example of that. And in, in fact, I was just trying to tell that. So there we go. In the last talk in this CDF, you know, the uh, virtual conference workshop, we have uh, Eric Short. He actually worked with the uh, Pearson, this, you know, the, one of the popular calculus one-on-one -on -one book, Greek, you know, Cochrane book, which uh, in, in re we turned into the CDF. I mean, he turned into the CDF format, and it, it, it became quite popular. So I will show you the, what example it is. Uh, okay, not here, but you know, we have a couple of chapters from the book. It looks like this. You know, it's a very nicely written book, and actually, the, in the course, he described how he did it and what kind of material he used. So. That would be a really good start for who are interested in you know, publishing their own book in the CDF format. No, fantastic. If you want to learn more about CDF, it's wolfram.com slash CDF.